Philip Benier here, and a lot of people have been asking me questions about what my camera looks like and what kind of gear I use. And I thought I'd take just a you know, chance right here to, to go ahead and introduce you to my, my, my gear. It, it kind of looks a little bit different than the gear you use, but uh, this, is, this is my setup. This is my main setup. The one I'm using right now is my Casio EXF1 Pro. It's, uh, like a, it's a DSLR style camera and it's the camera I use to shoot my high-speed photography on. Uh, this right here is a HD6. This is from the uh, JVC series, so it's a JVC GZ HD6. And this is a 3CCD camera with a lot of the, the manual functions. Uh, and beneath that, I have an XLR2. That's an XLR adapter that allows me to plug in XLR cables and and microphones and things like that. That right there allows me to interface, like I said, the XLR microphones to my camera that takes the uh, 3.5 millimeter mini plug. And so by using that, I can go ahead and plug in two XLR microphones and input it right into the computer, <laughs> right into the camera. Or I can go ahead and go one, I can take the, take the uh, microphone that's up here, which is a comes from Rode Microphones. This is a Rode video mic and it's an excellent microphone if you're looking for a, you know, a really good first microphone. This is a great microphone to use. Uh, this is on a shock system so it, it doesn't worry about vibrations and this cover right here is it's called a dead cat and the dead cat basically keeps the wind noise down so if it's really windy out you don't hear that it doesn't screw up your audio. And so that right there basically makes it so you get nice clear audio. We got the heavy duty tripod. Uh, the heavy duty tripod I, I got uh, last year. And I tell you, um, before I had it, I had the, the cheap, you know, $20 ones. And now I really have a hard time even looking at one of the cheap ones. This is so much better than using my old ones that it's just not even worth talking about. It is, it is really that big of a deal. Right here, this box right here, this right here is a 7-inch um, monitor. This is the monitor I use for the camera. The camera does have its own small little monitor. I keep that basically when I'm using it. I keep it folded out like that, right? That way I can go ahead and, and watch the monitor here um, or somebody else can watch the monitor here while I'm doing something. But this right here is my, obviously, you can take a look at the difference between this one and this one. You're going to see a lot more detail on this one. So that's why I use this monitor. This is the, a battery powered monitor. So I can go ahead and you know, either power it through the plug or power it through the battery pack. Now, also, and obviously that gets this video from directly from the camera. Now, holding onto the monitor here is a special articulated arm and what's nice about this it has you know, a contact point a contact point and a swivel in the middle and by tightening up or loosening this one wheel it's able to go ahead and tighten up all the other ones at the same exact time it's a great setup uh, basically there's not a whole lot on this side except for cabling uh, you know, fairly simple stuff I've got cabling here, I've got cabling here. Uh, depends on which I'm using. Right now, because I'm not using the camera, uh, there's some cables that I'm not really using right now. Um, if you look right, right here, this right here is my Zoom H1 Handy Recorder. And this is a, a field recorder. It's an excellent quality. It's the same quality of recorder that you get from the Zoom H2, but it's in a much, uh, it's, a, it's a plastic case rather than you know, aluminum or anything like that. Uh, it's, it's made so it's a lot more affordable. So this is like a, a $100 recorder. And it's not just a recorder. You know, when, when I say it's a recorder, if I pop that off there, this right here is just a wind muff. But this right here is a stereo recorder. So if I'm at the range, I can go ahead and capture true stereo recording. 
or like I am right now, if you notice, you got the cable here. Well, this long cable attaches to, <laughs> to another cable right here. And basically, basically that comes up to my lapel mic. The lapel mic here is from Rode. It's the Rode Lavalier. And it's a fantastic quality microphone, um, but it requires that it has phantom power. And because of that, I have to run that through the H1. Now, if I was using this camera here, I'd run it through the H1 and out the other side, like this right here, I'd run a cable out. But in this case, I have the, the little headset. And I use the headset to go ahead and check my audio. So I can go ahead and I can plug that in and actually hear what it sounds like right now. So I know what, what quality levels I'm getting. And it has a little red light on there. And the red light starts to blinking if it's clipping, if the, if the sound you know, is going too high. So I'm able to go ahead and use this. And right now I'm using it in the... Uh, in the separate audio uh, mode where it's obviously not connected to my camera, which is there. And because of that, what I have to do is I have to synchronize my audio. And what you don't see at the very beginning of my videos is this right here. And that right there is, of course, just your thing for the movies. And it's called a clacker. And basically you hold that up and it tells you the information on this specific clip. And when I go ahead and I snap it down, what happens is, is it causes a spike in the sound because you get that crack, that see the spike on the sound, on the waveform of the sound. And so what I'm capturing here, I'll offload to the computer and I'll offload the video from the camera there. And they'll both be offloaded, both be loaded into my audio pro, what my, uh, I use uh, Corel Video Studio X4 and basically I put it on there and from there I go ahead and I have to synchronize the audio with the other audio so two audios and how I do that is that clap that you hear when, when you do that you that well I just go ahead and I look for the waveforms and you're gonna have two spikes and when the spikes line up the audio synchronized so I don't have to worry about any um, overlapping and then at that time I can just go ahead and turn off the audio on the camera there which is a any kind, any kind of camera that's built in, well, the microphone that's built into the camera is poor quality. Uh, when you're talking about something like this, well, right now I'm, the uh, lavalier microphone that I'm wearing right now, this is a uh, $250, actually it's more than that, but not two, about $300 worth of microphone just hanging from my shirt here. It's a ultra small, uh, very, high-end microphone and that goes into the hundred dollar recorder here and so already I'm at about four hundred dollars just be just for audio and you know you go ahead and compare that to the probably the 50 cent microphone that's in the camera uh, it's going to be a big difference in audio I try to do the best I can on audio sometimes it's, it, it, because it, it is so difficult I don't get to listen to this in real time so I don't, I can't check levels and things like that. So you do the best you can with what you got. I actually am, it may look like I'm, I've got a lot of money to go ahead and do this stuff with and I don't. Uh, you know, I, I live on my army disability and it's not much. Last thing on here you'll notice is this thing right here, the sunshade here. This is called a Koken, that's C-O-K-I-N filter box or filter holder and you take a uh, a threaded adapter you go ahead and spin it on there that takes the coken size and what happens is that I'm able to go ahead and insert three separate coken filters and coken filters are square to uh, they're four by four square filters and basically what I do is I I have a round one on the inside and that round filter is uh, to get rid of glare and that's the polarizer. And then I've got another filter right here, and this is a Koken filter. And this particular one is a ND4, this neutral density, neutral density number four. And I use that, and this is the size of the filters I use. And I'm able to go ahead and load in several different types of filters. So if I'm at the range or something like that, I can 
load in a filter. I can load in a, a colored filter to make the sky look better. I can do all kinds of things. So jazz up the videos just a little bit more in the, I haven't really done a whole lot of work with the Koken filter out yet. So you're going to be seeing a lot, lot more of that in the next coming videos coming very soon. I've got uh, several more videos to go ahead and, and render and put out there that have been shot uh, within a month, month or two ago or, or so. So I've got a lot more videos to go ahead and kick out before you're going to be seeing a lot of different changes. Um, the, the recorder here, is, the recorder is new. The microphone, the lavalier microphone, this one right here is um, fairly new. I've never used it in video. Uh, mainly because I, I didn't have the recorder to go ahead and do it with. So there you get to see my my setup and the, and the way it's set up. Um, everything is you know fully adjustable, obviously. So and everything is able to be reached. So if I'm shooting video, I can go ahead and I can hit buttons and whatever I need to do. Uh, it makes my life a whole lot easier. And this is a, a really nice setup and it's really good. Uh, 1080 HD so um, lately I haven't been uploading 1080 HD but well you get the idea <laughs> I've been trying to do 720 uh, but there you go if you have any comments or questions on my gear feel free to post it below don't forget to subscribe don't forget to rate my videos I'm Weaponeer and I'll catch you in the next video Come on.